So hey, it's Jordan, Ancient Literature Dude, back to talk with you once again. And I haven't done one of these things in a while, so I just wanted to share with all of you my latest book haul. Uh, it's not much, but I got a couple of books in recently, uh, Tolkien-related, because I'm a huge Tolkien fan to begin with, but he's been sort of back in the public spotlight because of the Amazon series that's uh, coming out here you know, relatively soon. And uh, so I got a, a few more books to kind of round out my collection. The first of which uh, is The Lays of Beleriand, and uh, this is a part of the History of Middle-earth series, which, if you're not familiar with it, is uh, a kind of a glimpse into the creative process of uh, the Silmarillion and The Lord of the Rings. Uh, Christopher Tolkien, uh, J.R.R. Tolkien's son, was kind enough to uh, kind of gather a lot of the uh, early manuscripts, the, the early drafts of these stories, and put them in a form together with his notes that sort of explain uh, Tolkien's whole uh, writing process for uh, the bulk of his, you know, Middle-earth uh, legend area. And uh, it's really fascinating, uh, both from the perspective of, uh, you know, people who are interested in his writing because they are writers themselves and simply fans of his work, because uh, for one thing, it shows that even as great a mind as Tolkien's didn't come up with the stuff overnight. It was very painstaking. It evolved over a very long period of time. Uh, and to me, it's just a very fascinating and, and unique glimpse into uh, a writer's thoughts uh, that we don't normally get to see. So uh, this one was recommended to me actually by uh, the good people at the Tolkien fan subreddit. Uh, you know, so hopefully I will be reading some of this uh, on my channel here relatively soon, uh, the, the kind of longer poems about uh, Turin and Baron and Luthien and that kind of thing. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, to be honest, uh, the one that I was more excited about was uh, A Gateway to Sindarin by David Stallo. Uh, I've wanted to study Sindarin for a very long time. Uh, I considered studying it about 10 years ago when I was studying uh, Middle Welsh because uh, if you're not familiar with it, Sindarin is one of the uh, forms of Elvish uh, within uh, the whole you know, Middle Earth cycle. Uh, the other w primary one being Quenya, the, the two that were more fully developed by Tolkien. And uh, Sindarin is the one that is primarily based on Welsh. Uh, if you're familiar with Welsh, uh, it uses a lot of the same uh, system of mutations or, or, or similar ones that they're, they're clearly highly based on them uh, and a lot of the same grammatical structures you might be familiar with in, in Welsh uh, so having taken a look through it uh, it's really fascinating stuff uh, the author has done a great job of presenting the material and uh, I'm just hoping to for myself uh, get familiar enough with the pronunciation of the language uh, and the remaining examples uh, of it within the Silmarillion and the Lord of the Rings uh, to, you know, hopefully read them adequately uh, because I want to read them and share them on the channel. Uh, so anyway, yeah, um, been on a bit of a Tolkien kick lately, obviously, uh, and just wanted to share it with you all. So uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you find this kind of stuff interesting. And uh, I will be back with you shortly to hopefully be doing more discussion videos. I know I've been kind of uh, you know, AWOL and this kind of stuff recently, but uh, just been going through some stuff. Hopefully I'll be back at it, you know, pretty shortly, but hope you're all doing well as usual, and I will talk to you later.